Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mitchell Foster. My pronouns are they and them, and I'm the coordinator for residence education in Holcomb Hall. And I will be joining you this afternoon to tour Holcomb. There we are. There's the, There's the placard right there, Holcomb Hall. That's right. Well, if you are just coming in and joining us, uh, make sure to make use of the chat option um, on the bottom of your screens for any questions that may come up during this tour. But I joined you last week um, with Futural. It's very loud out here, so we're not gonna stay here for a long time. But as I was saying, I joined you last week for Futural, and now I'm gonna be joining you for Holcomb. Um, and if you are watching and you saw Futural too, I'm the same coordinator for residence education for that building and it, this building as well. And I'm gonna explain how that works as this tour progresses. Hey, is, uh, you got a compliment on your mask from Leslie. Oh. Thanks. Uh, do we want to uh, point, out any, point out any points of interest here in front of Holcomb? Absolutely. So um, Holcomb, just like Futural, is in a very good spot on campus. Um, um, across the street, across Garland, is Pat Walker Health Center. So our students won't have any problems accessing um, any services um, that require at any attention for their health, um, especially during what we're going through right now. and. On the north side of the building is the bookstore. So just like Futural, it's also very close to the bookstore, just across the street, um, North Douglas. I mean, sorry, West Douglas Street. And um, on the other side, on the south end of the building, um, it's very close to Union as well, where um, the food court is. So very cool spot. Um, we have um, on this side right here is um, the Fulbright Dining Hall. Um, and it's also the building where we get um, our mail and packages. And by we, I mean me, the hall staff, and all of the students who live in Holcomb. We have about 16 people watching us right now. And we'd love to hear where you're from and uh, where you'll be coming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So this is my second year in the coordinator for residence education position. I moved here from Northern California two years ago where I got my master's in California State and Chico. And um, it's been a great experience moving to Northwest Arkansas. It's definitely a very good area um, where there's culture, there's a lot of good restaurants and there's a lot of good things to do. Fantastic. All right. Well, shall we head in? Let's go. And yeah, just to um, respond to Leslie, if you don't recognize, this is like um, the, from the movie Up. Um, it's the house with the balloons um, in that Pixar movie, Disney Pixar movie. <laughs> nice. All right. So just like Futural Holcomb um, has a fob and you could only get in the building if you have a fob. The difference between Holcomb and Futural is that here in the, in the school year from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. students and scholars office, which makes my office accessible too. But we're going to talk about international students and scholars office in a little bit. Um, and we're going to talk about what other things happen are happening in Holcomb or what we have in Holcomb as well. Sounds good. All right, let's head over here this way. So now we're heading into the first floor study lounge where um, the students... Do we want to point out your office? Oh, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is my office right here. Um, very, as you all could see, it was very close to the front doors. So literally you walk in the front doors, you look to your right, and that's where I'm at. So if you ever need me, I'm always in my office. And if I'm not in my office, you could definitely reach out to your RA or send me an email and we could set up an appointment, but I'm very accessible this way. And as I said earlier, um, the front doors are open from eight to five during the school year on the weekdays. So if you live in Futural and you wanna see me, um, because I'm also your coordinator for residence education, you could just go in from eight to five through the front doors and see me in my office. Sounds great. And hello, Joseph, glad you're tuning in. All right, so now, We'll go and see the first floor study lounge that you could use to study. So how have you been staying busy this summer, Mitchell? 
Um, a lot of preparation for when the students get back, a lot of preparation as well for when the resident assistants are getting back. So currently we're um, moving forward with our plans on RA training because RAs are going to come back in two weeks. Um, so that's going to be, that's like what has been keeping me busy. For sure, for sure. So this is another fobbed access door, so you can't just walk in if you're not a resident in the hall. All right, let me turn on the lights for you all. So this is the first floor study lounge. Um, we have two private rooms or conference rooms, um, and we have a bunch of tables and a bunch of chairs for anyone who might want to do um, group study, socially distancing, of course. Um, and there's just a lot of space for quiet studying. This is also a quiet study space. So if you want to use this spot, um, it is understood because of the signs everywhere that um, everyone else needs to be quiet around you or you need to be quiet around other, other people because it's a quiet study space. Very good, very good. Lots of places to study, it seems like. Yeah, and um, if you really want to be super private and super quiet on top of like it already being a quiet space, these conference rooms right here actually also close. So you can close the door from, for some privacy and um, just make sure that when you leave the space that you leave the door open so that people are not assuming that there are people in there. Great. All right. If you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat um, and I'll be happy to answer any of those. But this is the first floor study lounge. And now we're heading to um, the little kitchenette on the first floor and then we're going into the music room. Let's go. Okay, and that kitchenette's available to any students who want to use it, I would guess. Absolutely, yes. Um, so this is the little kitchen. Um, in the first floor of Holcomb, we have a fridge um, that anyone could use. Just a reminder, because of the times that we are living in, we are highly, highly recommending all students to separate their stuff from other people's stuff. So when you use the fridge for um, storage, for you to avoid contamination, please put it in like a plastic bag or a Tupperware and separate it from other people's belongings. But this is available for all of the students living in Holcomb, as well as um, our microwave too. So the only thing that's different from this kitchen than the kitchen in the basement is that the kitchen in the basement has a stove and an oven, but this one is just basically for fast food, like fast um, food making um, or, you know, microwavable stuff. You know, we had a comment from Marla who said her son uh, Colin was here last year and is returning again That's to the awesome. same hall. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Said had good experience with the staff here, good experience with the community here. And I was thinking, this is one of our, like we're at what, 140? Do you even remember how many people uh, reside in this particular 143. hall? 143. 143. Yes. So it's one of our smaller communities. Mm -hmm. really. Yeah. So it's very homey. I don't think we're going to reach 143 this year, so it's even going to make it feel more homey. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to that, too. Great, great. Well, thanks for that comment, Marla. We really appreciate that. Absolutely. And now we're going into the music room. Let me turn on the light for you all again. Um, the music room has a piano um, that all the residents could use. It has um, a sofa. Um, a coffee table, we have an ottoman and an armchair as well. Um, most of the students um, that live in Holcomb usually use this also as a study space. Um, they like using this chair to study and you know casually study. Um, and some of them also use this to like hang out. Yeah. yeah. Other than, of course, using the piano, which is what this room is for. <laughs> it is a nice little piano lounge, yeah. And now we're heading towards um, our Holcomb living room. Um, this is a very special community space in Holcomb, in my opinion, because of the aesthetics and because of what the space makes you feel. It makes you feel like you're at home. It makes you feel comfortable. And it makes you feel like you're 
living in a place where um, things just feel homey and good. It does have a nice intimate, but yet really put together kind of look to it. Yes. Um, the other thing that's special about the Holcomb living room is in Holcomb, we do a series called Global Series, a programmatic series, um, where we feature a different country every time we have Global Series. And Global Series is head by um, the graduate assistant in Holcomb, as well as international students who are from that country or domestic students who have done exchange or study abroad in that country. And what they do is they talk about the country, they talk about their experiences, they talk about the culture, and they basically share it with the campus community. So during Global Series, we turn this entire living room into a classroom. So all of these furniture go in that other room right there, and we bring out all of our chairs um, and um, set up a projector and a screen um, on that end of the room, and we basically get together. This year, because of COVID, obviously we're rethinking that um, because of social distancing um, protocols and requirements. We're probably going to rethink the format of Global Series, but Global Series is still going to be a thing that we are doing this year, and it's still going to be a Holcomb signature program. And if you have any interest in international studies or um, just cultures at all, it really is a great program for that. Absolutely. All right, so, so far I've showed you all the entrance of Holcomb, my office. Um, I've showed you the first, um, first floor study lounge. I've showed you the kitchenette, the music room, and the living room. And now we're heading down to the basement where I'll show you the um, basement lounge. Sure, and let's uh, to make a quick stop too by international students and scholars, even though they're working from home right now. Let's, let's do that. Yeah, so earlier um, I was talking to you all about international students and scholars. Um, international students and scholars is a department on campus um, whose office is in Holcomb, and that's the reason why this front doors are open from eight to five on the weekdays um, during the school year. It's because we have staff members who work in this office. It's also, um, it's also because of international students and scholars that um, we and in Holcomb get to do exciting programs such as Global Series because of our partnership with them and because of the supplies that they, they also provide for the program. I noticed Mitchell we're at the front desk now and what are some things that students might do at the front desk? Yeah, so um, this is um, the front desk in Holcomb. Um, it's usually manned by an RA um, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the weekdays. Um, and from 4 p.m. to midnight on the weekends. Um, usually, um, in normal circumstances, there's a lot of people um, gathering around here. This is where students build community. They talk to the RAs. Um, they check out some stuff, um, usually kitchen utensils or pool sticks or um, ping pong paddles. Um, this year, we would like to encourage everyone to bring their own kitchen utensils so that we could avoid contamination. Um, we're also encouraging everyone to bring their own sanitizing um, sheets or sanitizing wipes to sanitize all common areas as they use it. Luckily for us is that this year we're going to be doubling up on sanitation of common areas in all of the residence halls, including Holcomb. Um, so there's going to be um, people sanitizing common areas in the mornings and then the afternoons. Great, thank you. The other thing too, um, if you all are just um, checking in or coming in and joining us right now, is that earlier I mentioned that across the street is where the hall staff and the residents get their mail and get their packages. This front desk doesn't provide mail and packages for our residents, unfortunately. We all have to go across the street to Morgan Hall to get our mails and packages. Each student gets a notification in their email if they receive a package, um, and all of um, the mailboxes are all over there too. All right. And uh, Joseph, you had a question about studying and reading a book. Feel free to ask, and we'd love to we'd love to answer it. Right, so we head on to international students and scholars. Absolutely, let's do that. Okay. 
So just like Christopher said, on normal circumstances, this is a very happy and joyful office. And I'm pretty sure that the staff members are going to be coming back soon. Um, but right now it's a very dark space, but that is the International Students and Scholars Office. Um, it's definitely a partner um, of Holcomb Hall in international education and also in serving international students that live in, in this building. Fantastic. All right. All right, now we're going up to the second floor to check out some... Or the basement. Oh, the basement. I'm so sorry. Yes. No that's worries. Where no worries at all. Um, we're going to the basement to check the basement lounge. And I'm also going to show you all the community um, kitchen down there. But I guess because we're very close to the laundry room right yeah. here. Let's go check the laundry out. out. And then we'll head over here. So this is the laundry room that um, is going to be used by all of the residents in Holcomb Hall. Um, we have different washers. It's kind of loud in here, but we have different washers and multiple um, dryers as well. So take a look. And some vending right there in the corner. Yeah, we also have vending machines. Awesome. So this is the only laundry room that we have, but it's definitely sufficient to our student population. And your laundry fees are covered under your housing fees, so you don't need to worry about bringing quarters or anything like that. All right, and now we're heading towards the basement lounge. Um, where a lot of socialization and community building also happen in Holcomb. We're so green, we have all our lights off, it's good. Yep. So take a look around our basement lounge. We have um, a big TV, um, it's a smart TV, so students could use it to log into their Netflix account, their Hulu account, their Disney Plus. We have a pool table, we have a ping pong table, and we have a few um, sofas um, for students to lounge. This is literally where a lot of student groups come together um, to socialize. And when I mean student groups, I just mean this is where the residents find their own group and find their own um, home um, with other residents um, away from home. So it's a very, I would say it's a very magical space, to be honest. Yeah, it's a nice warm space, yellow walls. It looks very comfortable. Yeah. So um, again, this is the basement lounge and I want to show you next, um, I want to show you the community kitchen just adjacent to um, the lounge. So the difference between this kitchen and the kitchen upstairs is again, as I mentioned, this kitchen has an oven and a stove um, that students can use to cook their own meals. It's a very, it's a very um, highly used oven and stove because a lot of our international students use their, um, make their own food. Um, and so it's always a busy, busy space during the school year. We've had a question from Laura who's asking us, how are you, um, are we gonna, how are we gonna keep laundry and community areas safe with social distancing? And uh, one, one thing that we're doing to ensure um, that those guidelines are kept uh, are we're going to be cleaning our bathrooms uh, twice a day. Previously, we cleaned them once a day during the week, but now we're going to be cleaning them twice a day. And that would include weekends as well. So that's one way. And then high touch surfaces will be cleaned more than they ever have been. Um, and as far as community areas and social distancing, um, we do have some some tools in terms of academic um, uh, deterrence, I guess, uh, so some community standards that we're following that we can use if we have to, but we're really not trying to do that. We're really just trying to educate students on you know, maintaining six feet of distance, wearing masks at all time. Uh, those would be the main ones. Do you have anything you'd want to add? Washing your hands, very, very important. Um, having a sanitizer around you as you go around campus or as you go to the um, common areas and also have um, cleaning wipes with you too. There are those that are in traveling packs that I always carry around when I travel or when I go from 
one space to another so that I could make sure that I'm just sanitizing my surroundings. But housing will be sanitizing more often yes. in community spaces, Absolutely. that for sure. Yes. Good. Awesome. So um, we've seen the basement lounge here in Holcomb, which is a very fun area. And then this is our, o our only community um, kitchen. And now I think we're ready to head up to the hall. Yeah, let's head up and see some rooms and I guess bathrooms and study spaces on the floor. What floor are we going to? We're going to the second floor. And the second floor is very identical to the third. So um, I don't think there's a reason for us to go to the third floor. If you've seen the second floor, you've also seen the third floor. So I think we're, we're going to be good. And um, Laura asked, will there be hand sanitizer stations there? And I'm trying to remember, I don't, are we putting additional? I don't think we're, um... There are hand sanitizing stations, especially on the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, let us get back to you if we're putting more um, hand sanitizer areas, especially in the halls. Mm -hmm. But the halls have bathrooms, so there's always an opportunity for you to go in the bathroom, sanitize your hands. I also showed you all the kitchenette on the first floor. The kitchenette on the first floor also has a sink and um, a, a soap dispenser that you could use as you're going on your way out or you're leaving um, whole gum. You could wash your hands real quick before leaving. And we do have a lot of these questions answered on the housing website at housing.uart.edu. I just published a new FAQ earlier this week about that. Go and check out the bathroom first. Okay, let's check out the bathroom. It's not usually this dark either. Yeah, it's not usually this dark. We're just turning off all the lights. So this is the community bathroom. You have six stalls of toilets and five shower stalls here. Let's go ahead and check out one of the shower stalls. The shower stalls also has a changing station so you walk in there's a space for you to change and then you walk further in and that's where the shower is nice to have a seating area before you have to get in exactly all right um, should we go look at the study spaces in the floor? Yeah, let's go take a look. So we have two study spaces on each floor as well. In addition to the study space in the first floor, in addition to the basement lounge, if you want to use that as a study space as well, that's possible. It's right up here. We're coming into it. So you can totally use this area to um, take a seat, read a book, read a few of your handouts for class. Um, yeah, and it's a very sunny space. It's always so bright in the day. It's pretty cheery in here. It is very cheery, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Would you say that you see students from time to time using it in that way? Like Absolutely. small study groups? Sometimes I see one or two people. Sometimes I see just one. They, you know, they close the door so that um, they could get privacy. There's a lot of opportunities in Holcomb um, for private studying. As you could see, there are like two little conference rooms in the first floor study lounge. Um, and this is also one of those things, like places you could close the door, study, and you know, um, get as much as you can from your study time. And that's why they're here. Yeah, makes sense. All right, and now we're going into the other um, study space, which is the smaller one, but it's also available on either floors, on both floors, on the second and the third. We have armchairs um, for studying. Students also frequently use this for quite a quiet space. I don't know, it's probably about 
12 feet by 8 feet, something like that? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I think that's, that's a pretty nice, pretty nice size space. Yeah. All right. And now I want to show you all a sample of a double room in Holcomb. So if you come in, you'll see that there are two twin XL beds. Um, a three drawer dresser um, and built in closets. And also a built in. So what are you mirror. seeing in the built in closet? Um, what do I see in the built in yeah. closet? We have a mirror. A we mirror? have a mirror. Um, we have a rod, a suspension mm -hmm. rod. Um, we have um, spaces for your shoes. Um, and then another space for some more stuff. And then you could also use this space up here for more storage. So really a lot of storage space in those. Yeah. And then each student gets, like I mentioned, a three drawer dresser. Um, this um, desk and another drawer with a lock. Okay, and we have uh, another question coming in from Lori. And um, she asks, is there a chance to see a single room? Absolutely. Okay, guess what, Lori? We're gonna go see a single room. Let's do that. All right. All right. So the single room is about half the size of the double room, um, rightfully so. It has one twin XL bed, it has one desk, one three drawer dresser, um, another one that has a lock on it for private belongings, and then a built in closet as well. Same dimensions, approximately. Looks like a couple more drawers, maybe, or a couple more shelves in there, or does it look the same? Yeah. Okay, and a big window out yeah, there. Yeah, a big window. All right. Well, you ready for them to come? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone come in the fall in a matter of a few weeks. I'm very excited to meet everyone who is going to be living in Holcomb. It's a very homey community. It's a small community, so you get to really meet a lot of people and um, be close with them, if you so wish. Um, and of course, thinking about social distancing and precautions, um, I wish to see you and socialize with you and build community with you um, when fall semester comes. Excellent, excellent. Now is the moment if you have any questions for Dimensions. Um, yes. We'll be happy to entertain those. Um, and uh, Joseph asks, I have another question about clean, sustainable environment for safety on campus. And, you know, we do do our best when it comes to sustainability. I encourage you to bring a bottle for yourself for water. And, uh, and recycling is done throughout. Yes, yeah, so each floor has its own recycling bin. Um, so in the school year, we have big bins up here close to um, the, the top of the staircase this way. And then that recycling bin um, is a space for you to throw your um, bottles, your plastic bottles, mixed paper, um, and um, cans. Great. Great. Okay. Well, without any questions about dimensions, I think we'll probably sign off and keep the tour rolling next week with a couple other halls. But uh, Mitchell, you've been a pleasure. We've, we've enjoyed interviewing you twice this, uh, this week. Uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining y'all. And if you're watching and you're going to be moving in in the fall, I'll see you then.